Computers keep changing the world, but their power and safety is limited by their rigid design. The T2 Tile project works for bigger and safer computing using Living Systems principles. Follow our progress here on T Tuesday Updates. This is the ninth update of the T2 Tile project. Let's get into it. Uh, I made another T2 Tile using the new printed circuit board that came in a week or so ago. It was meant to test out this idea of having a light sensor so that the tile could maybe detect if you waved a hand in front of it, something like that. Also to go to mounting holes in the corners and a bunch of other small revisions that I made as well. I made a video about that. Let's take a look at that first and then we'll talk about other stuff. Uh, but my thought is, is to just go ahead and try to see if we can solder one of these things up today. And uh, solder it up by hand rather than uh, trying to use the stencil right now. Where the heck is the camera? Look at that, we did a new component. It's more like it. <laughs> this is not right either. This thing is gigantic, that footprint is absolutely huge. Oh, 
So what are we going to do about this? Jeez. Software guy lost in hardware land. I'm gonna change tips, which means I have to let it cool down. So I'm gonna stop the video. I'll try to get a picture. <laughs> Boy. All right. So we also found this, which I suspect is the fuse I was intending to try. Um, in that gigantic footprint I've been wanting power supply crossing that the uh, Well, who knows? But at least it's another test.
the next step is to try powering it up. I haven't actually tried this yet, so this is our uh, uh, bench power supply. All right, I see. I see the red LED. Got a beagle bone green here that uh, I took off a known good uh, tile. Actually, takes a fair bit of force. Going on here. Oh, <laughs> the USB uh, port crashes into that uh, J10. Bottom <laughs> still, if we need to. Bam. Bam. Uh, okay. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. <laughs> <clears throat> well, and, and also we're going to need new uh, software to be written before we can actually test the uh, light sensor. So all of that is going to have to wait for another day. So, all right. Uh, <laughs> Uh, there it was. Uh, there's an awful lot of testing left to be done. Uh, um, don't really know what the connectors work and so forth, like I said at the end. But overall, uh, the case mounting holes look reasonable. Here, here it is with uh, some brass standoffs in it. These are the M3 things, and uh, it's a little bit tight, but it appears there's enough clearance all the way around that I'm and especially close to one of these. Uh, uh, this guy is close to the northeast. Uh, buffer chip, uh, but I think it's going to clear all right, so I'm not going to worry about it. And I think there's going to be enough room to redesign the case around these guys and have it be. We'll see. That's going to have to get the 3D printing stuff going again real soon. Uh, there's a bunch of things that need to need work. Obviously, um, the uh, J10 the header at the end is going to have to be moved. The footprint. I got to decide what I want to do about the uh, fuse and uh, the Q4. That's the light sensor. Uh, that's not hand solderable, and it really brings up the basic question that I need to face that I haven't faced, which is um, there are, are these footprints the, these that I was talking about, you know, these things here. You see these, uh, so there's a, a black area in the middle, that's where the chip goes, but then there are these little silver areas, which is where the pins go for the particular chip. And the ones that you see here that have actual, you know, sort of visible uh, stuff extending away, those are footprints designed for hand soldering, so that they're a little bit longer, so you have room to get the soldering iron in there and heat the pad up and, and get the whole thing to go. But uh, there are different footprints for uh, reflow soldering, where you put the stencil down, and you put paste over the whole thing, and then you put all the things on, and then you throw it in the oven. Uh, um, and I have sort of a home version of uh, reflow stuff set up. I've tried it some. I've had kind of mixed results. Uh, I think part of the mixed results was that I was trying to do reflow soldering on pads, uh, footprints that were for hand soldering. So the question is, is it time, am I ready, am I terrified to commit to changing all of the or most of the uh, footprints that I'm using currently for hand soldering over to reflow soldering and going again, which would basically mean that sort of my advanced beginner skills in soldering iron stuff would become much less important and my almost non-existent skills in hot air rework would start to have to get shined up. We shall see. That's for the future. But the board does work. The board does boot. <laughs> That's pretty good. Uh, uh, okay, so beyond that, there's a whole lot of news uh, out in the world related to T2. Uh, I want to mention it all uh, as uh, very briefly. Uh, first off, we now have a T2 uh, subreddit, thanks to Hey Andy X. Uh, um, I mean, as I start meeting all these folks who are interested in this stuff and, and they're, they're doing things which on the one hand is just so incredibly super great and, and you know, it, it gives me the, the, you know, energy and hope and everything to say, you know, let's do this, let's do this. Uh, um, but I'm also seeing people under their handles and under various pieces of their names and I'm not exactly sure how to refer to people. Uh, so if I'm not saying you, you, you the, the handle that you want me to use, just let me know. Uh, um, 
uh, Hey Andy X is is worried uh, uh, about whether the T2 Tile subreddit is is going to sort of just steal traffic from the YouTube comments. And on the one hand, I understand, and I'm worried too. I think the the YouTube algorithms, you know, they they like seeing comments, or at least they like seeing certain amounts of comments. I don't know. It's all magic at this point. Um, so it would be sad if we didn't have any uh, questions, comments, and so forth down in the actual YouTube uh, comments that go with each of these weekly updates. But on the other hand, uh, uh, for actually having a discussion and going back and forth and linking to stuff and so on, the YouTube comments not great. The T2 tile place could be a place to uh, orient around that. Um, and I'm, I'm hoping it will be there, I, I, you know, step by step. Uh, um, so that's great, and, and thanks to uh, Handy. In addition, uh, Michael Wilding uh, set up this Gitter thing, uh, which is uh, like Slack or one of these chat room kind of things. I, I hardly even know the names of them all. Uh, this one has the particular advantage that it has relatively tight coupling, although not corporate coupling, uh, to GitHub, so you can sign in with your GitHub credentials and then, I don't know, do something, uh, you know, have stuff work better. Uh, um, uh, folks have already shown up, all of our, our, our heroes, Andy Walpole, uh, um, and uh, hey Andy X is there, and so forth, as well as uh, Joe Collar, people I'll talk about in a second. Uh, um, I try. I have notifications turned on for this thing, so if you say something in the T2 tile library and I am on the machine, I will see it sooner or later, probably sooner. So that has already been helpful and I think that, that has uh, I'm encouraged about if you're if you're more development oriented uh, and you want to know either just what's going on or you think you might be able to contribute for example if there's anybody who has high art skills in Linux kernel modules we could really need you soon uh, um, the T2 tile lobby uh, is the place to go uh, to find people. Uh, the Earl is there. The Earl of the subreddit is also there. Uh, one of the things that happened already on the uh, Gitter uh, is that uh, Joe Collard, who I, I've known for years and years, he was at UNM way back uh, when, AJ Zaff and Isaac Clark uh, have been kind of uh, working uh, in various bits and pieces on actually getting Docker containers going for uh, to get MFM running, uh, number one, to sort of just, you know, one click go on Linux where it'll work best, but also getting it run on Windows 10 and Mac OS. Uh, um, and that actually appears to be working. It's not super fast on Windows and Mac because I guess it's running in a virtual machine, but it's there to play with. And, you know, on the one hand, anybody who knows me knows that I'm pretty much of an open source zealot and I'm always trying to encourage people to, uh, you know, find their way out of a dead end operating system. <laughs> Into into Linux or, or at least into open source, which will allow us to survive in embedded in the land of T2 tiles and so forth. On the other hand, I can tell from my uh, demographics and my statistics and stuff from YouTube and whatnot, the number of people who are watching from Linux is a rounding error compared to the number of people watching from uh, Windows. So this would be a way that you could play with MFM and Ulam a little slower. Then you know maybe you'd be interested in trying to set up our Linux bar. You know, who knows? Okay, but that's great. Uh, thanks to Joe and AJ Zaf. Uh, the uh, Ubuntu packages have now been updated for almost all uh, for 16.04, uh, 14.04, .04, and 12.04, something like that. I'm, I'm going to have them up shortly for 18.04, but they're not quite there yet. <sighs> And that's uh, the main events for this week. Next week, we want to have a, a new revs of the board ready to go. We want to have the current thing tested. Uh, it will be out in one week. Thank you so much for watching.